Hi, welcome back to my channel. This episode is entitled The Power of the Spirit of Truth. Before I delve into this, I want to lay the foundation. Number one, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Number two, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Number three, and we also thank God continually for this, that when you receive the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its inherent supernatural power in those of faith. As we commune with God daily, his word, his truths, are deeply rooted and eminently ingrained within us. More so, our prayers are answered and we are protected as the deceits and schemes of enemies are exposed. Thus, we can't be taken unawares. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that, now pay attention because many miss this, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. For God's favor, it is not possible. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you not see his glory? If so, let me clarify why you can't see it. Number one, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Number two, but the natural unbelieving man does not accept the things, the teachings and revelations of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness, absurd and illogical to him and he is incapable of understanding them because they are, now pay attention, spiritually discerned and appreciated. And he is unqualified to judge spiritual matters. So I watch as the Holy Spirit speaks into the lives of those whom he is warning to turn from evil. Let me confirm the wickedness that I speak of. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. When the Holy Ghost comes to you in truth and you reject him, this is counted towards you as denial, a willingness to be deceived. We must be careful because this happens 
often. But this is a harsh truth. They went out from among us, seeming at first to be Christians, but they were not really of us because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out, now pay attention, teaching false doctrine so that it would be clearly shown that none of them are of us. The refusal to acknowledge the truth renders you defenseless as you are turned over to a reprobate mind. This is taken from the Amplified Version. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or consider him worth knowing as their creator, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do things which are improper and repulsive. If you don't understand anything else, this is why lies, deceptions, and even half-truths are so dangerous, and why a liar and a murderer are the same in the Lord. Detestable. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. I didn't give all seven because I am adding context. To confirm this, two perversions that God speaks of in Psalms 101 are pride and lying. At this time, I am focusing on the detriment of liars. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. And again, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. The power of the truth is made manifest in God. Number one, to protect. So stand firm and hold your ground, having, tighting, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart. Number two, it is powerful. For the word of God is living and active, full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. Number three, to make whole. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Number four and finally, because the yoke of bondage is broken. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant or slave of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son shall therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. It is up to you. Will you choose life 
or death, to be blessed or cursed, good or evil, God or Satan. The choice always has been yours and is still yours. Remember Ananias and Sapphira. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly keep back for yourself some of the proceeds from the sale of the land? As long as it remained unsold, did it not remain your own to do with as you please? And after it was sold, was the money not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart? Again, take heed. You have not simply lied to people, but to God. And hearing these words, Ananias fell down suddenly and died. And great fear and awe gripped those who heard of it. This is not a parable or a metaphor. It is a warning of a real event. Even though God is no respecter of persons nor of sin, he equates a liar with a murderer for a reason. So this is from me. The most despicable, malevolent person is one who will lie to your face. This is a treacherously insidious spirit. Don't be fooled by the simplicity or even the title of half-truths and little white lies. These individuals are savages. Always coming from a place of love and in truth, Thank you again for joining me. I invite you to get to know us better at benevolentwoman.com. Thank you.